Welcome to our Soft Plan Friday Fundamental on what is new in Soft Plan version 2022. Um, I'll get John to introduce himself, and he can explain a little bit about what we're going to be doing and what was kind of going in um, to the to the uh, the box as far as this version is concerned. And then we'll spend the next 45 minutes going through some of the major features within Soft Plan and just trying to highlight some things that uh, perhaps you've already um, you know gone down the path to begin using or we may be introducing some of these new features to you and how you can best utilize them within your day-to-day um, -day operations. So, John, I'll turn it over to you for just a minute. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, I'm John Jones. I'm the Vice President here at SoftPlan, and I just wanted to maybe take you through how we think about a, a version and, and how, we, how we broke 2022, 2022 up. We're in a 24-month cycle, and... Due to COVID, the 24-month cycle for this current version allowed us to prob to, to create a, a, a probably a deeper version than is than is typical. Uh, less people on vacation, less people at trade shows, things like that, really allowed us to to accomplish um, accomplish more than more than we typically would. So we we look at a version and kind of break things into four different categories: items that need to be rewritten. Items that require significant upgrades and receive significant upgrades, brand new items, and then smaller incremental changes. So in, in 2022, the rewrite items were 3D, and that's all centered around DX12, and, and Jim will spend um, a significant amount of time there this morning, and railings. And what we learned on, on railings is that often our users thought of railing or as stair problems, which are really railing problems. So we, we completely rewrote the railing code. It affects stairs, it affects decks. It's significantly different. It's significantly enhanced. It's uh, certainly more capable. The, the items that are that are falling into the significant upgrade category, um, and these are often the same items, roofs, plan sets, and building options. So in the in the roof, the roof changes for soft plan 2022 were really concentrated on doing a better job on of handling contemporary roofs, sheds, uh, faces of sheds, soffits that, that that are attached to those sheds. So it's it was a lot of, about more handling more contem more contemporary homes, um, homes that we may think of more of a, as a Western uh, style as opposed to what we'd see here in the Southeast. Um, items that are completely new, the the two that that really come to the front are the nesting, nesting regions and nesting drawings, and we'll take you through those today. For anybody with an AutoCAD background, um, think, of, think of those as XRES. And stepped sloped walls. In previous versions, a soft plan wall could have one composition, one height, one offset. That's completely blown out of the water now. You can have a single wall that steps and slopes and has uh, openings in at the transition points. So that's a that was a significantly a, a, a completely new chunk of code. And then there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of smaller incremental changes. And those changes are driven by input from our user base. So for the most part, those aren't those don't come from us. Those, those come from you. So if you'd like to see changes, please you please uh, send the suggestions to us. We love to hear them. Jim? Yeah, thank you. Um, so th the first thing uh, that I want to take you to, and I'm actually going to be pulling this from off screen to, is to our actual soft plan webpage. And the, kind of the number one question that we get a lot of times when a new release is coming out is, is my hardware going to be compatible? And as you know, hardware changes, it seems with the weather. I mean, it's just constantly evolving and, and um, new video cards and, and new processors are coming out. So we try to do our best to stay up to speed with that. We're 
constantly updating this page. So what we tell you today may have changed already by tomorrow as far as what's the next best thing available. Um, so you'll be able to go to our webpage, softplan.com. We will tell you exactly what type of, of you know, computer soft plans requiring at this stage for the most recent version. And <clears throat> we would also, there's a link here and, and maybe even more important is what kind of video card does it support? And I, I, we would like to push you uh, to, to, to read this because um, with the DirectX 12 support and, and, and the, the way that we can utilize that with your, you know, with your video card, if it supports that, you'll see the results instantly within 3D. And um, I know that, uh, uh, and John can even speak to this, that finding a DirectX 12 card can be a little bit of a, a chore just due to shortages that are out there at this stage. But if you get the opportunity to, to grab one, um, do it because the, the payoff on your drawing time and the speed with which you see the um, your 3Ds and, and, and the feedback on them is instantaneous. It, it, it's, it truly changes the game as far as 3D goes in soft plan. Yeah, just one, one item I'd like to, to add there. If you do have a DX12 video card, um, be diligent in keeping your drivers up to date. Uh, they're constantly changing from the manufacturer side. So you should be able to see at this point a, a kind of a 3D. This is our, our, our splash screen house. Of course, I've had a little bit of vegetation in there uh, and so on. But um, when you get into soft plan and you open up any model whatsoever and you can go into your options and your mode options, under the renderer tab that's there, um, you have the option of DX12 and DX11. If you have the, the option of pushing DX12, press it. And uh, I, I would argue you never go back to DX11 at that point. If your card does not support it, this will be grayed out. And at that stage, you will be working in DX11, which is what you were working in in Softline version 2020. And then just have an eye towards upgrading your video card going forward from there. <clears throat> Excuse me. At this point, um, with the DX12 you know, technology and some of the things that we've done within SoftPlan, you'll see, you know, even just, uh, you know, as I move about inside the model itself, okay, it's going to, the, the shadows and, and uh, reflections and such are all going to be, you know, instantaneous within the software. And so it, it really does give you a, a instant feedback on that. So, for example, as I'm moving about and, and walking inside this house here, if I were to right click on the refrigerator to do a surface edit some of the things that have been changed as far as you know um, it's it's reaction within soft plan or, or implementation would be the uh, the option here of adding something called metalness which is exactly what it sounds like it takes a surface and it applies a more metallic feel to it. So as you watch the refrigerator and as this is you know, increased, that is going to change on the actual model instantaneously within that DX12 environment, it, as well as I you know, turn the reflectivity on, okay? And I, again, you can you know, modify or manipulate these two fields here on the, the model. It gives you that feedback instantly. And then as I move around in the model, you can see the quick regen that, that happens as a pertains to the refrigerator and of course in this case then I could surface copy paste those same options to other surfaces that would be similar in in nature as far as their finish is concerned with the, the the roughness okay you can actually take something like a, a stone wall so as I move down the into you know this model you know down towards the uh, the front room here um, we've actually got ourselves you know kind of a, a you know fireplace here and then you can see the reflections instantaneously once again with that dx12 and as you begin to uh, modify this, here you can increase the roughness which is going to give it a more realistic finish okay as it pertains to the stone wall now i am cognizant that um, sometimes some of these changes that I see is, is probably more prevalent on my screen than it may be coming across. That is not a reflection of soft plan. That's just simply how it is coming across the internet for, for when you're viewing this, this, uh, uh, video as we go through it. So take a look at both of these options, the roughness and the metalness, because they will really increase the the the, the relief depth and 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 how you're seeing, you know, the the, uh, the the texture for the stone as well as the reflection in the metallic feature, uh, you know, when it pertains to things like the refrigerators or any kind of a a metal finish. John, did you have anything to add there on that? 
No, I think you've got it covered, Jim. <clears throat> okay. Additionally, one of the big things that we did um, with, with lighting is, and, and I'm just going to, you know, move my cursor up here just a little bit. So this house obviously has, um, you know, multiple pot lights and, and we've got a ceiling fan in here, et cetera. And these, as I edit a, a, an existing light fixture, whether I was to do this in electrical mode or, or I was doing it here inside the 3D is under the light tab, <coughs> prior to um to 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 uh, softline version 2022 okay this was just a, a brightness you know feature that was on here right and so what we want to do here is um we're going to go in and modify the lumians and as you you know increase or decrease this lumian factor on there is obviously going to increase the brightness you know within the, within the field and so as i you know take this up to a you know something brighter it will instantly give me that feedback once again you know, within the, the actual model itself, okay? And then I can also specify things like, you know, the distance in the same way, the decay factor, and even, you know, the angle with which the light is um, is shining. So those are things that you can do within, uh, you know, your electrical, okay? If you are working within the model, all right, and so as I'm, I'm doing this, and you get yourself a, a, a hot spot, this may just come down to, a, and when by that I mean like a bright, you know, circle somewhere. That is just something that you can either adjust the lumen factor, okay, how bright this is, is, is going to be shining, the angle with which the lighting is also shining, and then as you go into a specific surface and you were to modify it, okay, we know that, that the, the surface texture of drywall with paint on it, et cetera, is is not a completely, you know, sheen like it would be on a desktop. So you may want to also increase the roughness. <coughs> and as you do this, I'm just going to mute somebody. We've got um, something going on as far as I just let me just go ahead here and there we go. Um, you, as you adjust the roughness, it's also going to, you know, tone down any, you know, hot spots or bright spots that you would get on the model. So understand that those are some of the features that have been added to the software with which you can do that. And as you're working inside any given model, if I were to change this into, you know, electrical mode, of course, the more light fixtures that you have added, the, the more control you're going to have over the shadowing, okay? and over the, the, the various yeah, texturing of the grayscaling on the model itself. Anything to add to that, John? No, I think we need to move on, Jim. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to move into uh, into nesting, um, and as John, uh, you know, talked about this, it's kind of like X referencing within AutoCAD. So I'm going to be changing uh, projects and, and flipping back and forth just a little bit. And the first one I'm going to start with is a very simple one, which is we're talking about details and notes and how we can, you know, go ahead and 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 modify those um, within the model. And so <clears throat> this will just take a second to uh, to pull up here. And once I've, I've opened it up, I'm going to have a, a, a series of uh, construction details. And I'm also going to have a series of general notes. And so in this case here, as I zoom into the construction details, for example, this is not unlike something that you would have. And maybe it's a detail sheet that you, you, you grab and drop notes uh, or, or details from into your various projects. And of course, if we want to keep these live so that if it updates, you know, we can make one change in one area and then have that modified and, and, and updated to the other, you know, plans with which this has been, you know, specified in. So in my case here, I'm going to come in through file and I'm going to select nest. And from here, I can select to create a source region. So when I click on this, I'll just simply sketch a box around, you know, where I'm creating that source region. Region, so to speak, and click. And you'll see here that it asks me to enter a region name. So this will just be, you know, citing, you know, details today. Okay. Um, it's whatever you want to call it and then click OK. And Softland will, you know, indicate it with the, you know, this, this dotted outline and it's highlighted in red. You can always edit this, this detail here. And when you edit this, you can, you know, ch you know, turn off so you can actually return it back to the colors. In my case, just for, for the sake of what I'm doing, I'm going to leave it, you know, as red. Now, I also have a series of general notes that are over here as well. Okay. 
right? And so as you can see, there's all kinds of notes that we may be inserting into a drawing. So as I, I go back through file and I'm gonna go back into my sample house drawing that I just had open a moment ago, okay? And I'll, I'll save these changes. I'm going to take the time to insert that detail into a uh, you know floor plan. And then I'm also going to have just a general note sheet that I'm going to import those drawings into. So there it is where I left it in electrical a minute ago. All right, so in this floor plan, I can select file. I can select nest. And at this stage, I'm going to insert a drawing or region. Okay, so when I click on this, the region was what I specified that box around just a moment ago and highlighted the, the, the details in the... Um, uh, you know, in red just a moment ago. So I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm just going to where I've stored my construction details. There you see a preview. So I'll click open on that. And this time, instead of inserting the entire drawing, I'll insert only the regions with which I called it a siding detail. And so now I can specify where I want to add the detail and click. Okay. Once this has been added, as I zoom in on this detail and do an edit on the nested destination, which was the siding details here, okay? And once I edit that, you can see at this stage, not only is it using the colors, but I can automatically sync that with the source, which is to say the project or, or the, the folder with which I pulled this from. All right, so if I were to check this at this point, any changes made at the source drawing will now be updated here. Additionally, I've created a blank drawing. So it would have just been file, new drawing. I can select the general notes and I'm going to import them as a whole drawing at this stage. So from the file and where I select nest, once again, I can select the insert drawing or region. But in this case, rather than just simply selecting a region at the, I'm going to actually go into the, uh, where I'm storing my details and select the general notes as a whole. I can select open on this option here, okay? And then I'll simply select okay and drag the notes onto the drawing, all right? So that they are going to be added to the plan. And it, once again, as I edit those, I can sync them with the source one way or the other, okay? Uh, let me take this out of profile and back into drawing mode where I have it saved, okay? And so again, this is using that red color, you know, there. Now, if I were to go into the, um, if I'm going back into the, the actual details themselves, okay? <clears throat> and I will, you know, save what I've done, I can go to the, 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 the detail, make a change, have it update on the floor plan where I input it. I could edit the general notes at the drawing and have it sync back to the source. So you, you can actually, using the nest feature, go back and forth between the two and update on the fly there. So in this case, as I you know, zoom into this you know, option here, I can edit this note. Okay, which applies to the the the, uh, the the detail itself. Here, I could change this to let's say you know three quarter, um, you know plywood rather than the five eighths, and then we'll change the bad insulation to an R forty, and you know click OK. So simple changes as far as the notes concerned, right? And I'll, I'll save that, and then if I go back to the floor plan in just a moment, you'll see that I can you know go in and sync that to pull this information from from that detail. So. Uh, a little bit of flipping back and forth going on right now, just be, you know, in order to show this, but you can envision if you have that detail added to half a dozen drawings or projects on the fly, you only need to make the change in one place and then sync it, you know, to all of the, the drawings where it has been added. Okay. And it's going to automatically show up, you know, there. So in this case here, you see that X reference or that nested drawing showing up inside the detail itself. And in a similar way, if I were to come in and edit any part of this drawing, let's just say over here, I were to edit this this uh, you know this note, okay. I could then come in and you know make a change to the note itself, and then at that point have it automatically sync with the source and have it updated as well. John, did you want to add anything to that? Because I know time is just flying by on this, and yeah, no, we'll, we'll I'll pick it up on the other at the end of the next section. Okay, so. Moving to, I, I've got a, a set of uh, drawings in here as well, a multi-family, um, you know, setup. And so I'll just, I'm going to pull this up and I'll save what I've done so far. 
Um, and what we're going to do with, with the drawing that's coming up is we've got a kitchen that has been designed already on one half of this, you know, multi-unit, you know, uh, session. And we're going to basically grab a kitchen from that and insert it, you know, into the other half. And so in this case here, as I zoom up, we see the kitchen on the right hand side. There's obviously going to be a kitchen applied to the, to, to the left hand side of this. And then we'll be able to go in and horizontally vertically reverse it as well as make changes to the original and have it inserted or, or you know applied to the to the nested copy so in this case here I would come in through the nest feature and again create the source region and so as I zoom up on this and I'm just going to sketch around you know the area that we want to add now I'm excluding the walls at this point so I'm just basically getting the kitchen only and here I will simply type in the kitchen option and select okay and you see it highlighted in once again in the the color red. And so as I come back into the nest feature and insert the drawing or region, okay, for, so from here, I can come in and select, you know, this was from the first floor plan. So I'll select that as my, my option. And then I can select the region for kitchen and then insert that into the, 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 the actual drawing itself. Okay, as I click to insert that in, all right, you see the dotted outline, which indicates the region to, you know, that indicates, you know, where I, what I've drawn. And as I right click on that, I can now edit the, the destination, okay, the nested destination. And as I do that from here, uh, you, this is where it's automatically being synced with the source. Now, as I, you know, edit this, I can also come down here a little bit further where you can start to flip the axes of the, 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 the uh, nested destination. So in this case, if I were to flip it vertically, Vertically, okay, it, it you know rotates it or, or, or flips it for us, and in this case now I can select the move and just simply move the, the nested region you know on the fly to where I want to have that you know relative to the model. Okay, cleanup gets it all snapped into place. Remember a moment ago, I just modified this showing that it was actually synced. And so what this will allow me to do is if in the, th this could have been added to multiple floor plans, like the second floor plan and the first, because there are four units in this. But as I now come in and edit this option here, where I open up the, the gas range, so to speak, that's there, and I change this to something else, like say the radiant range option that's there, okay? And I'm just going to, you know, run my, my, my cleanup option on that. All right, you can see that it updates this one here as well. So we've made a change in one place, and if this were added in multiple units within this project, because it was a first and second floor, it's going to, you know, run across and update all of those because of the fact that everything is synced here. John? Yeah, just to, to sort of wrap up uh, nesting, it has two distinct functions. One would be standard notes and details. The other would be for multifamily projects. The anchor point, the crazy looking reference point with the arrows, that can be relocated on the source so that's really kind of a, a, a seed point, if you will. So that can be relocated in the source. You can also, if you want to break the link, you just explode the uh, explode the nest and it'll return to, to normal soft plan items. And, I, and the last thing, I guess, is that we also have the ability to add other features in there. So you could, you know, uh, I'm right clicking on the water heater with which I, I did not include within the, the, the nest. And so in this case, as I right click on it, okay, and, and I've not exploded, I can now add that to a specific region so that if a change were being made here, once it's a part of that kitchen nest, it would then also be able to be, you know, updated throughout as well. So uh, it, it's a powerful feature, and of course, within five or six minutes, we can only explain so much of it. But um, just wanted to take you through that, and I, I should note, um, I'm not sure if I got that on the on the front. All of this is being recorded, so we will um, be producing a, a video of this and posting it to our, our YouTube site, so you'll be able to go back in and review how we do some of this as as well. Um, if I go back into my uh, sample house for just a moment, so um, I'm just going to move out of this one altogether, and uh, we're just going to talk about building options for just a minute. And 
basically we've added in a, a kind of a toggle, if you will, okay, that allows you to go in and set conditions within you, your plan. So for example, in this case right here, as I go back to this main floor plan, we have a two car option. And if I were to open up my building option and I were to scroll down, you see I actually have a three car option. Now at this point, you know, to see one or the other, it would be a matter of turning one on and then, you know, and one off in order to be able to see what those options are within the plan, okay? And one of the things that we've done is under the visibility is we've added this ability to now set you know what, you know, away from the manual option so that if one condition is set, the other one automatically is kind of an either or. So I can go in to where it says manual at this stage, okay, and I can automatically set this based upon, you know, a, a you know, or operator, so to speak, as far as that goes. And so in this case here, as I do this, all right, it's the auto, but as the three car garage, okay, if I were to go into this, okay, it now turns that off and, and leaves me with the you know, the two car garage off and the three car on. So it's a really simple tool to be able to go in and set those auto features up so that as you turn one feature on or off, it's automated. And of course, that's going to update your elevations as well on the fly. So um, something to play around with, because in a lot of cases, you, you're offering two and three car garages, different front elevations. You know, you would never want the bay and, you know, a flat front of the, of the front elevation at the same time. So you can set these, these, um, automatic, you know, turn on, turn off options there within the plan. <clears throat> Anything to add to that, John? No, I think that, I think that's covered, Jim. Okay, so I'm just going to, for just a second, um, remove a, a, a few things or basically clear my model and just I'm going to pull up this basement plan only um, just to, to, to jump into uh, taking a look at the step break wall that, that we've added. So in this case here, um, we're, we're taking a look at inside the 3D and I'm just going to, uh, you know, zoom this up and I'm actually going to put it back into the... Um, uh, let me get into this main, my basement plan here. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right now. And I'm gonna take a look at this back wall on the back backside here. So I'll break this out into a new vertical tab group so that as we're taking a look at it and as we make the changes you know, to this, and I may even for just a moment turn off the, the background because it's just a little bit distracting um, that's there. And uh, I may circle back to that and talk about skyboxes before we're done. So as I zoom this up, you know, just to take a look, so, and, and we've got basically a long wall right there. And one of the keys to, the, to everything that I'm about to do, you know, on this is just simply that it's treating this as one wall. And, and the, the key to that change is going to be that as I do that, um, you'll be able to place openings where there appears to be a step in the wall. Prior to, to, to this version, if you wanted a wall, you know, a step going on the wall, whether it was the, the, the top or the bottom of said wall, okay, that was treated as, as independent walls basically, you know, butting up to one another. So you could not have an opening straddle that step, so to speak. Now, in this case here, as I'm editing this wall and, and taking a look at it, so you see it highlights the, the, the vertical wall that's there and the top of wall, which has, you know, a lot of the same features that it did with fit to roof, fit to ceiling, okay, now has an option of, as you can see down here, flat deflection, you know, sloping and, and stepping, et cetera, as does the bottom. So in this case here, if I were to come in, you, you can see I'm going to step this feature. And so right now, the key right here is it says one of one because there's only one step that's taking place. If I wish to take this length of wall, which is give or take, you know, about 32 feet, I can come in and split that wall. Now, what Softline will do is we're going to put a break at the midpoint of this and you now have two steps. OK, and and if you're not sure, just take a look at the the uh, the, the 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 screen. The one that you're modifying is the one that is, you know, highlighted as far as the drawing is concerned. OK, so in this case here, if I were to once again click on this next feature here and, you know, click that I wanted to split that again, I now get three splits. And as I'm going through each of these walls, OK, you can see the various, you know, heights and steps that are taking place. So in the case of the the. Um, um, the, the first one, I could go in here, modify it to have an eight foot height. 
Okay. And so that's that wall right there. I just changed it on the fly. Okay. As far as the, the, the height is concerned. And then I'll go to the next one and you can see that I could, you know, change, you know, whatever I wanted that height to be as far as the step is concerned. All right. And I can also change the individual height of that wall. So it now goes from an eight foot to a six foot and it modifies the step to maintain the top of plate that's going to be there. And then I can go to the next wall over, which is going to have a height of four feet. And once again, it steps it up. So that's just taking care of the individual steps. In addition to that, you can go in. So if I were to go back to the, the midpoint, which is steps two of three, and it's highlighted here, I'll now be able to go in and specify that I want to slope said step. Okay, so as I click on this option here, all right, I'll now be able to modify the down and the up offset. And of course, if this wall were running left to right, that would say left and right. It's actually, you know, just pertaining to how that wall sitting in plan. And so in this case here, I can now modify this to be, let's say, eight feet. And that up height is going to go to four feet. And what we've done now at this point is we step this up. And as I say, uh, well, this is not a realistic, you know, necessary that I'd be putting an opening here. But but if I were to come in and just simply select, you know, a um, let's find a, a, you know, fairly wide window, something that we can stick in there. And I were to, you know, position my cursor where the step is taking place. OK, you can see that it it's treating it as one wall and, and, and not relegating this to be three distinct walls because of what's happening with the footer. OK, and the same thing can be done with the top. Uh, a top of wall. So if you're doing something that needs some sort of more elaborate type parapet type situation going on with 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 your whether it's a house or, or or light commercial, you'll be able to go in and modify that to be able to step the walls and specify whether it's raking, etc. You can even go so far as to edit a wall, and I'm doing this, you know, obviously inside the the 3D, where if I go to the top of wall, okay, I can now go in and it's specifying only that one section and now set it to have a deflection, let's say, of two feet, and I begin to, you know, uh, split that into multiple options. And you can see at this stage, I'm I'm breaking the top separate from the bottom. Okay, so you know the multiple ways I've got, you know, I can split this into four distinct options, whereas I only have three on the bottom there. Um, so that it should give you a lot more freedom within your design work with what you're doing, because you're no longer, you know, being limited with where you can place openings and what you do with the top and the bottoms of your walls. John, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think we're good there. Okay. All right. Um, a, a, a great feature that uh, that. I, you know, really, really like is um, if I, I'm going to go into this main floor plan for a second. And if I were to add this into the, 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 the model for just a moment, so we can see it is the ability to do a quick find on a, a feature. And so I'm just going to do this, you know, I'm generating a 3d cause I'm going to need it here in just a moment to um, also take a look at railings. And uh, we basically, while this is just generating in the upper, you know, right hand corner, you will see an option there that says quick find and basically you can type any feature that you want into the um, into this field up here and soft plan will automatically you know find it for you and you don't even need to type the whole thing so in this case here if I were going to zoom around to the front just to take a look at it okay I'm going to you know want to add this new feature called bracing um, to to my front posts that are here on the front so I'll just zoom this up for a second so you can see it. And I'm going to do it within the 2D plan right here. And if I don't know where that feature is found, you know, I saw it mentioned, I can begin to start typing in, you know, the, the, the first two, three letters of whatever command I'm looking for. And when I pick the draw brace option, okay, Softland drills down, automatically finds it for me. And now I can just begin to sketch it. And you can see at this stage, we're basically just putting these braces in at 45 degrees. You can always come in and edit said brace, and you can then change all of the dimensions in the same way that you would just about anything else within the program. Okay, so that's just a, a uh, using that in the upper right hand corner. That's your quick find for that. Type in any feature, it'll automatically go for it there. All right, I'm going to move inside the model. Um, and so I, basically, I'm just, I, and I'm going to let me move this back to full screen. Uh, it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about railings. And, and railings, honestly, um, were one of those things that. Uh, you know, at this stage, 
you know, sometimes you, you smart yourself. And I just, I accidentally moved it to its own window. And so instead of having it in the child window, I just want to get myself back inside my 3D. Um, but just so well, just while I'm pulling this up, railings have been added, you know, in a, in a way that, um, you know, allowed for plenty of detail to be added. In essence, in, in, in many ways, um, you know, railings were, were kind of treated as, as a, a, almost a child of, of a stair or a deck, et cetera. Now they really are their, fully their, their own entity. And so what I, one of the things I want to do is I'm going to add a railing here inside the second floor plan. And, I, you know, I intentionally left it off so that I could come in here through draw. And as I select, you know, that I want to go into my stair and just simply select railing, you know, that'd be a, a normal thing that you just want to do. And of course, many of the same ones are there that you, they're, you're used to, like Cologne and the Hampton, but you'll notice that we've got some new ones in there, you know, that include different, you know, options as far as, you know, the spindle patterns and, and the textures are concerned, etc. So if I pick this square iron diamond, for example, and I'm just going to position my cursor to click to start and move my cursor the length of the, the rail, and then I'll right click, and it adds this railing in. And as I take a look at it inside 3D, okay, you can see the railing that's been added there and the post. Now, a couple of things. This has been broken out into kind of two different options. The posts now edit separately from the railings. They have their own dialogue because there's just a lot that goes into them, okay? So you can actually right click on and, you know, whether it's a mid post or an end post, and you can now do a modification or an edit of that. And at this stage here, in addition to some of the things that you're used to, like center on rail, et cetera, okay, you can actually customize this, you know, as whether or not it's been, being defined by, you know, the post, is it going to fall under the handrail? You can also go in and specify or pick from any one of our, you know, already, you know, done library items that are in there, okay, so that you can, you know, you know, add that as your custom post, it's going to be, you know, added to the end. And so obviously I would make that same change all the way across, you know, within, within the plan. The railings, if I were to right click and edit on this given rail right here, this is where you're going to see under the custom assembly, the ability to really go in and specify this. So already you can see, um, you know, just the upgrade of having two different spindle patterns in there. And if I were to go into the custom assembly, Okay, a couple of things. Down the left-hand side, you'll see that I got spindles, toe rails, handrails, and, and we've got all of the dimensions that are associated with those specific items that are there. Okay, and as I scroll this left to right over here, I can double click on the spindle options. And this opens up a, a, a kind of a secondary menu, right? And you see that I've got an iron, and then it says single iron diamond. Okay, so I can either, you know, modify and change that as it pertains to what I'm using for, for spindle patterns or even add a third spindle pattern if that was something that I wanted to do. Uh, so in this case here, you know, I might add in, let's say a, you know, this option for, you know, within here, um, if I want to customize the width, etc. But what that's doing is I'm adding a third spindle pattern to this option here. And you can see you've got the option for the dimensions as far as the widths are concerned, or if you want to customize the width, that's where the checkbox comes into play here. Okay. You can specify, you know, number per step and even, you know, the direction that it is facing, you know, depending on where it's being placed. So as I click OK, all of those options are being, you know, applied. And if I click OK and come back into this, you'll see really quickly, it just added my third pattern in there because I didn't override it, you know, any of the dimensions. It's a very, very, you know, subtle, you know, pattern that's being done there. Additionally, with this um, and, and, and our wall definition dialogue, which we really don't get into in this, this class, you know, resemble some of this, which is how things are being built. And so as I roll the mouse wheel and zoom in, you'll see that you'll have the ability to go in and modify things like where the, the you know, the, the, the handrail or the tow rail or even the spindle patterns are going to be placed. And you have all of these new features, which allows you to move, you know, edit, you know, items on the fly. Okay. So as I click on the handrail, it highlights it here and allows me to go in and specify the changes to dimensions, you know, it, 
etc. So it allows you to build more complex options on there. Okay, so I could even add a, you know, uh, if this was a, a deck, you might have a two by four that's running vertically and then a two by six running horizontally. You could simply add a second handrail to this. Okay, you see the handrail being, you know, option there. I can select the move and even move this where I want this to be placed. I can specify the dimensions on this, you know, to something, you know, larger as far as the width is concerned. And as I, you know, come bring back, okay, this option, you see I've now got kind of this double, you know, handrail taking place. So those types of, uh, of flexibilities with railings, you know, really will, you know, um, I guess enhance what your design is going to be. Uh, John, did you want to add anything to that? Just as we as we think about railings, railings are second to roofs in complexity from in terms of, of designing the software to handle the problems. So it, it's it's a it's a very very big problem that we're trying to solve here. <clears throat> I'm actually uh, moving. We're kind of down to the, the final couple of minutes here. And so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm jumping into plan sets for just a minute, because this is a big one for, for those of us that are, you know, doing a lot of drawing. And, and, and as you get towards the end, you want to get these things assembled onto a, a sheet, right, for printing. And up until now, you would basically drag and drop your, your elevations, your floor plans, whatever it may be onto a given sheet. Okay. And so, you know, in, um, in this case, I've just pulled up this single sheet and I want to add in, you know, three floor plans. Uh, at the top in the ribbon bar, you'll see that we've got options for, you know, how you can split your sheet up, whether it fills the, the, the entire drawing space, okay, uh, or, or you want to add multiple pages. And so in this case here, I'm going to you know, highlight the three drawing page is my option. And of course I have three floor plans is what I want to work with. So as I grab the main floor plan and I drag it onto the sheet, you can see at this stage, it actually split screen this into three equally divided sheets within the, the, the place with which you would add the drawings. In other words, the, the, the right strip where you have all of your information and your, your logo, et cetera, is excluded. And it's, it's basically within the, the working space. And so as I drag and drop my main floor plan, at that point, it's going to, you know, fit that within that, that, you know, that sheet right there. Okay. And so again, I'll drag and drop the second floor plan. And then finally the basement to fit. Okay. So in my case here, I've actually got, you know, this, um, you know, this title block, which I may not want to keep. So we've also done some work as far as adjusting the crop views. Okay. Within here where you can actually, um, you know, add it as a polygon, which allows you to, you know, freeform trace something in there. In my case here, I'm just going to, you know, drag and, you know, exclude that cross-sectional view that's there. And so that's going to allow me to now, as I move this, you know, onto the sheet, I can then edit that, you know, partial and, and change the scale on this to something that's going to be a little more, you know, fitting for my, my, my drawings, which, you know, works with also the basement and what I've got for my second floor plan over here. So whether you're doing this for floor plans or whether you're doing this with, with elevations, okay, all of that is going to, um, you know, basically allow you to pull all of that into the, the, uh, the, the drawings as well. Okay. <clears throat> Now, um, the, the last thing that I, I want to jump into as far as with the, um, with the I'm going to go to the floor plan for just a second, is a change that we made as it pertains to interior um, uh, elevations. And so as you go into the model option and you've got your interior elevation here and you were to you know, click and determine where you wanted this to draw. You've always had the ability to come in and adjust, let's say something like this to, you know, how far you wanted to see in, in, as far as, you know, it's, it's, it's linear there, but you can now edit this if you wanted to see only, you know, a certain you know, area of that. So in this case, the depth with which it views, and you'll see at this point now, it gives me kind of an outline or a box. So if you were attempting to get the island only, for example, you could then specify how far that dimension is going to be. If I were to come in here and draw an interior elevation facing in this direction, I could then edit this option here. Okay. And you can see at this stage, rather than seeing everything beyond that level, I could turn on the depth and I could key this into 
be, let's say, four feet. So now it's only going to find, you know, what falls within that box. And once again, using the adjust feature, I can now adjust how far that, that the, you know, that length is going to go, okay, as far as the, uh, the one that I'm modifying, so that what falls within that box is really just the island. So this is number seven. So as I, you know, drag and drop, you know, uh, or, or take a look at that interior elevation, I'm now only looking four feet from the point with which it's drawn. And of course, I adjusted the length of that so that I don't get a lot of other detail and information showing in, you know, beside it. Does that make sense, everybody? And are there any questions on this just while it's, it's uh, pulling this up and generating it for me? There would be the island there. <clears throat> John, do you have anything to add as we kind of hit up against our 45 minutes and then I'll answer Nick's question there? Yeah, I just um, you can't you can't do this version justice in 45 minutes. So I, I would encourage everyone to to go onto the website and go through the through the feature list and to, to make a plea for my favorite feature in, in 2022, perhaps. For, the, for those of you who do site plans, um, take a look at the video for the rotate to ortho command. It What it does basically is squares an odd site plan up to your screen without changing the underlying data. It's a very, very big time saver. So if I could point, if I could point you to one place, one thing that we skipped this morning that we probably shouldn't have, that would be it. Thanks. So if, as John mentioned, uh, if you go to our, our uh, YouTube page, um, we've uploaded a number of files uh, or videos that take you through uh, all of these features and more. Um, and we're constantly updating this as well. So in the coming you know, months, even though we've got a lot of the new features up there, we will produce videos of kind of like a did you know sort of you know scenario, which will take you through you know some of these items as well. Um, this basically has been recorded. So I will get this uploaded uh, sometime next week for you if you want to go back and review this. Um, we do have a couple of Friday fundamentals that are coming up to answer a question that not all of these are the same. The first two were basically to highlight the new features. We do have a another one coming up in July, which will focus on strictly kitchen design, and it will incorporate a lot of the new features that pertain to, you know, what what it takes to going into a kitchen and, and how we've enhanced that for you. And then finally, in August, we'll be taking a look at outdoor living space, and that'll really allow us to also, you know, drill down on railings as far as decks are concerned, where their placements are for fastening posts of the outside of the, the rim joists, customizing railings, et cetera, while also taking a look at some of the other features which allow you to paint vegetation rather than drawing every single tree or, or, or grass, et cetera, onto your plan. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. I know that we went fairly quickly through all of this. We hope you got a lot out of it and uh, we look forward to, um, to, to seeing you again soon.